first, my friend Rajiv Chandrasekharan, who is a senior vice president at Starbucks, and prior to that, an award-winning journalist at the Washington Post, author of remarkable books uh, from his time as a war correspondent in Iraq, co-author with Howard Schultz of Starbucks of the book For Love of Country about this generation of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, and executive producer now of a series that many of you, you are probably among the 80 million people uh, around the world who have encountered a recent Starbucks project called Upstanders, which is a series of 10 digital, digital short films about remarkable everyday Americans claiming power and making change happen in civic life well off the, ma the radar screen of the mainstream media. I'll never forget the morning that I saw an article about a group of Muslims who had bought 30 acres and were planning to build a complex. When I saw that, my stomach kind of tightened up. They were going to be right across the street from us. I felt that, that ignorance and that fear. So I prayed. I said, Lord, what are we supposed to do? The idea of Memphis Islamic Center started because we felt we needed a family life center, a place for people to pray and play, to socialize, and have a sense of community. It is a difficult time for Muslims in America. We did not expect to be welcomed. We thought we have to work hard. And one day we were driving by and we see a banner. And that banner says, Heart Song Church welcomes the Memphis Islamic Center to the neighborhood. Me and my wife both were thinking about leaving church because I, I just did not accept what was going on. Lord, we are so humble. I went to Pastor Steve and asked him, I said, what, what are we doing? He told me to uh, read the Gospels. When I read through those Gospels and I figured out I was the problem. <laughs> what was going on with the world today? I was the problem. <laughs> and then we started building. The month of fasting, the month of Ramadan, was supposed to be our grand opening day where we start praying here, and it was clear that we were not going to have our hall ready. We got a call, and Bashar said, we just wondered if we could use your building for our prayers. In case we don't get our permit in time. Instead of using the room for a few nights, we ended up spending the entire month of Ramadan at Hartsong Church. Ramadan brought us much closer. People started knowing each other on a personal level. We had done coat drives and food drives, and close to 9-11, we do a blood drive together. I would have never thought that I would be friends with Muslims. Right here. <laughs> and I love it. It's kind of like my world got bigger. We are better congregation now. We are better people because of this friendship with Heart Song. It's an amazing friendship that I can't imagine having missed out on. How's everybody doing today? Would you cheer louder if you're having fun? Well, that was one of our 10 upstander films. It's a Pardon, it was uh, it's a sort of an edited down version that we shared on social media. But you guys might be asking yourselves, you know, why, why would a coffee company be out doing stuff like this? Um, and it, it, it really has its roots uh, both in our, our core values, uh, but also what, what we were seeing uh, last year, uh, which as, as we've talked a little bit about and heard about today from Eric, um, is really uh, a product of, of, of decades in the making. The, the, the vitriol swirling around our country, the, the dysfunction, the toxicity. And um, on one level, you can 
watch the news and you can scroll through your social media feeds and, uh, and be really depressed about the state of Washington uh, or, you know, back when we were working on this, what was taking place on the, on the campaign trails. Um, but we wanted to see the rest of America and uh, we were convinced that in cities and towns across this country there is a better America. Um, there are individuals and community groups uh, and civic organizations that are uh, demonstrating the sorts of values that have made our country great. The, the civic engagement, the empathy, the civility, the willingness to work together with people who hold different opinions than one does but in a polite and respectful way. I'm not telling anything that all of you don't know here. You're, you're all here at Citizen University. You are engaged citizens. But so many of our fellow countrymen, women, uh, I think fail to recognize that. And we thought, why don't we use our scale for good in this case? For our company, it, it goes back to some of our core values as a company that offered even part-time workers health care uh, before we were a profitable company, before decades before the Affordable Care Act, which thankfully will live another day, uh, and hopefully another year and beyond that. Um, uh, a company that uh, provides uh, its workers, uh, all of them, with a chance to get a full four-year college education and so forth. And we thought, um, let's, let's share at least some of those values. And so we, we went around the country and, and started looking for these stories. We found this remarkable one in Memphis. Um, and it, it, it's, uh, it, it's far from, from isolated. Uh, we were up in, in, uh, in northern Michigan in a small town called Baldwin, halfway between Grand Rapids and Traverse City. Um, uh, Lake County, Michigan, one of the poorest counties in the state, and not more than a few years ago, they were lucky if a quarter of the high school graduates went on to some form of college. In fact, in most years, there'd be more kids, more, more graduates from the high school within four years on public assistance than having a diploma in hand. And a few years ago, uh, the, the leaders in Baldwin, this town there in Lake County, uh, heard about what was happening in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where a couple of wealthy philanthropists had endowed a scholarship that would provide an opportunity for every high school graduate to go to college. And they thought, that's great. Let's try to do something like that in our town. They didn't have a wealthy philanthropist, but they had, they had uh, a desire to, to uh, create change. So they, they went and knocked on the doors of, of philanthropies, nonprofits, and, um, and corporations in the state of Michigan. But it was in the height of the economic crisis, and everybody turned them down. So they came back to their town. They licked their wounds, but they were undaunted. So they hit up local churches and the Rotary Club police officers and firefighters. Every teacher in the, in the school system gave. They knocked on the doors of people who were well below the poverty line. And, you know, grand, grandparents on Social Security said, yeah, I'll give, I'll give 15 bucks a month. And they managed improbably to raise enough money to create what we believe to be the first ever grassroots promise scholarship in the country where every kid who graduates from Baldwin Senior High School today gets a $5,000 a year scholarship for four years to attend a public university in the state of Michigan. And I'm, I'm happy to, to say that this past year, 95% of the graduates from Baldwin High School are off in some form of college. And we, uh, we were lucky when we launched the series, we had a, it, it's an amazing story. and. Uh, one of, the, one of the women featured in our film who we brought to New York uh, when we were launching the series, first time ever she'd ever been on a plane, uh, she'd been homeless for several years and uh, never ever thought she could go to some form of college. Just got an email last week from the woman who, who, who helped found the program saying that this young woman has a 3.0 grade point average and is, is uh, going to be a resident advisor next year at Eastern Michigan University. Um, but, but these stories, um, they, they help point the way. To, to what we really believe to be uh, a better country. Uh, you know, we, we, we distributed them uh, in a kind of unique way. We're not a media company, but we are a company with a little bit of scale. We got 13,000 bricks and mortar locations in the United States. We got a mobile app that 
13 million people regularly use to, to buy coffee. Well, we said, okay, instead of just using this as a mobile payment platform, let's share content. We streamed the videos there. We streamed the videos in the in-store Wi-Fi. We printed tens of millions of cup sleeves that urged people to watch the videos and also urged them to register to vote. We engaged in a partnership with TurboVote uh, in a nonpartisan way to promote voter registration and election alerts and participation in the 2016 cycle. Um, and uh, you know, we had we had some wonderful collaborations, uh, collaboration with with Eric and the the Pluribus Project uh, uh, to help both source stories and and get the word out. Uh, Upworthy was a, was a great distribution partner, and, and we leaned into the Starbucks's social media channels, and uh, instead of just uh, um, sharing uh, the next uh, great uh, Frappuccino drink that we're selling, we decided to stream this content. And it had uh, incredible resonance. And as Eric noted, uh, 80 million uh, views thus far and counting. Uh, and we're going back into the field uh, this summer to create a, another series of 10. So if you uh, if you've got great stories up your sleeve, you know some interesting stuff happening, come and buttonhole me at the end. We still have a, a few more that we're, we're looking for. Um, but you know, at, at, at its core, it's, it's really reminded us uh, as, a, as a company, uh, as, as engaged American citizens, um, to, to look more deeply around our country, um, to get beyond um, to get beyond the superficial headlines um, and to start uh, more thoughtfully engaging. And, and, and the last point I'd just like to make is that, you know, our goal here wasn't to sell more coffee. It wasn't to promote the Starbucks brand. Um, it was really to, on one level, open people's eyes to this better America, but also to spur people into action. The, the goal of sharing that short film and, and, and the written short story about what was happening in Baldwin, Michigan, for instance, was hopefully to spark people in other communities to say, hey, why can't we do that here? Or the story of Steve Stone and Bashar Shala in Memphis to encourage people of all different faith communities to extend a hand of friendship to somebody else and how easy and simple it can be you don't always have to print a banner and put it on your lawn, but the wonderfully powerful results that can come from it. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing that was cut out of that, that, that uh, version that we just played was that when Bashar went to Steve and because the, 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 the initial construction was looking delayed, it said, would it be possible to use Heartsong Church uh, in case our building isn't completed for our Ramadan prayers? We'd be happy to pay you. Steve said, no, you're not going to pay me. We're neighbors. You'll use it for free. And, uh, and, and the great response, Bashar saying to him, well, well, I'm praying we don't have to. I'm praying our building will be done in time. And Steve says to him, okay, you pray that way. I'm going to pray the other way. I'm going to pray that your building isn't completed on time and that you have to come in here because it's going to be good for us and it'll be good for you. And of course, like any construction project, the true to form was delayed. Uh, and so the members of the Memphis Islamic Center did come in to Heartsong Church for the entire month of Ramadan. And uh, every night, members of Heartsong came to welcome them. And uh, this wonderful friendship that you, you saw there was forged. Uh, so you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a way to, we hope, truly motivate and encourage uh, our fellow Americans to be, become better citizens. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here uh, tonight and, uh, and to spend the day with you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.